Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, the audio professor, and I'm going to show you how to use grooves in Ableton Live. These will include using the grooves that come with Ableton Live, which is a tremendous amount, as well as extracting grooves and using them for your own purposes. Uh, this allows you to tighten up loops if loops don't sound like they have the right feel. Maybe one has a little bit of a shuffle or a swing and the other one's more straight. Played together, they will sound terrible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to fix that. So first thing I'm gonna do is I have uh, one MIDI clip that I, one MIDI drum loop that I programmed here. Um, sounds like this. Very straight. Um, and then I have two audio clips in here. So let's hear those, you know, three together. How about that one? There we go. All right, so they all sound good, but they all sound a little bit straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under the grooves in Ableton Live 11. We have grooves now here under the category. So I can click on grooves from the browser. That brings a whole list of grooves. I can scroll up and down. Um, there are some crazy ones. Now the grooves aren't just the timing, but also the dynamics of uh, these feels. So, you know, I can take, there's, you know, 16th notes and I can hit, click on it and it'll have a preview here. So if I wanna apply a groove to a clip, all I need to do from this groove pool is just drag it. So I'm gonna grab this six, swing 16th, uh, 61, drop it on here. And now over here on the lower left of the detail view of the clip, uh, when I select that clip, you'll see the groove is set to swing 16th notes. So let me turn off the other two clips, just have this uh, playing. And so over here under Groove, I can turn it on or off if I want to. No, it sounds a lot less straight. Um, so if I played that with the other two tracks that don't have that Groove applied to them, it'll sound ridiculous. It sounds terrible. So I can click on each of those grooves and each of those clips and apply that groove to it just by clicking on groove and grabbing that same one on there. And now they'll all have that same groove applied. So I'll have that nice swing to them. Um, so again, you can grab other ones and have multiple grooves to audition. So maybe I wanted to go down here. Um, they have some MPC grooves. Um, all sort of variations on that same uh, swing feel. Let's hear how that sounds on this main track. I can, you know, jump back and forth. I can go to the MPC swing here. I like that a little better. So I can go on to these other ones and, you know, select that MPC swing and use that. All right, that sounds pretty great. Um, so now suppose I have a groove that I like and I like to collect grooves in the same way that other people collect samples. And so I'm gonna go through and you know, once you add a groove, it's gonna show up here on the left part of the, under the groove pool in the uh, browser. Um, you know, I'm gonna get rid of these and I'm going to take this one clip here. This is a one of the best classic rock drum shuffles. This is from the intro of Toto's Rosanna, which is Toto's other song. Uh, let's hear it. Um, hopefully I don't get copyright struck with this. So I highly recommend checking it out. Um, obviously this is a lot faster. The original tempo is uh, shorter than that, but what I'm gonna do or is, is this slower than that? What I'm gonna do is I can take that clip and if I wanted to extract a groove from it, I, all I need to do is click on it. I can right click and go to extract groove. It might take a second or a few seconds. I'm just gonna take that rock shuffle feel and create a groove based upon that. So now once it's done, that shows up in my groove pool over here. So I'm just gonna mute that track and go back to my original 
um, MIDI loop here, this MIDI clip. Once I've extracted that groove, it shows up here under groove and I can go ahead and select that. And of course I can adjust the timing if I want. Maybe I just want like 70% of that. I can just drag it to 70% over here from the groove pool. Oh, maybe 80%. Ish. There we go. And then I can go over here into the percussion track. You know, so I've added the groove pool to the MIDI track. Now I can go here and add it to an audio clip here. So uh, from this audio clip, I can just select that Rosanna from the groove pool and it applies that groove. Um, from here, I'm going to select Rosanna from the groove pool. And now we can listen to all three of those together with that same groove. Now, maybe I want to control the dynamics with that. So over here I have quantize, uh, randomness, and velocity. Velocity is going to follow that dynamics of the original groove. So from here on this clip here, I'm going to uh, increase that velocity slider. I'll bring it down. That adds a little bit more life to my track uh, because, you know, I drew this in by hand, so everything has a velocity of 100. So what I can do, if I want to see what it's actually doing, um, I can go over here and see this little arrow next to groove. It's going to write that to the MIDI clip there. So let me just expand this out. So I click here. What was that? All right, I'm going to click here. And you can see the timing and velocities have been shifted around. I'm going to click undo because that can be a permanent change. So if I hit save, that would cause it to be a permanent change. So I want a little bit of a, a velocity in there. Um, for the others, auto, audio clips, I don't want that velocity to affect these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and duplicate that groove in the groove pool. And Rock Rosanna 1 is fine. And I'm just going to set these to, and I'm going to make sure the velocity is set to zero on that one. So there's two slight variations of that same groove. Uh, this one without the velocity change. And now let's hear how these all three sound together. Yeah, it sounds pretty great. Um, so if you want to look and see what this does to a, an audio clip, if I click on this right arrow, you can see it's shifted the timing of those beats around to match that groove. Again, I click undo. But there you have it. That's how you, you can use grooves in your Ableton Live sessions. It's a little bit different in Ableton Live 10 and below, but it's not too difficult. The only difference, the main difference is that the grooves are in their own category in Ableton Live 11, whereas you have, you have to bring up the groove pool by clicking on this squiggly line here to call up the grooves in Ableton 10 and below. So thanks for watching and happy making music.